FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried sits down with Good Morning America for his first major network interview after the collapse of FTX. Spends a few moments here with George Stephanopoulos. Let's take you through this interview. The first network interview with Sam Bankman-Fried, the founder of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX. And George, we know that you traveled down to the Bahamas, the Bahamas to speak with him. In that penthouse that he sat and used to work with his former colleagues at FTX, now alone with his parents. And Robin, this was really something, a wild interview. Almost two hours, we sat down. It felt at times like a therapy session. He took every tough question. He wanted to speak out about all the questions surrounding this collapse. Remember, about a month ago, he was worth about $20 billion. Now he says he's worth $100,000. Oh, he's under wow. investigation by prosecutors and regulars, but he insists. He I'm sure he's got other money put, put somewhere. He's got other money. A lot of It's funny, you know, I always notice about people, you know how when people are lying, they'll never look you in the eye. They'll always look down and they'll always have this crazy sunken in body language. And that's what he has here in this interview. Let's play through some of this. We'll look at you and see Bernie Madoff. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's who I am at, at all, but I understand why they're saying that. People Guy's lost a scumbag. Money and people lost a lot of money. And yep. I mean, at the end of the day, all because of you. Look, there's a question of what happened and why and who did what. You you know um, what caused you know exactly the, what you the did. meltdown. And I think that is reads very differently, right? When you when you look at the classic Bernie Madoff story, there was no real business there. <laughs> the whole thing, as I understand it, I think was was just one one big Ponzi scheme, right? Like FTX. FTX. That was a real business. He was at the In your top mind. of the cryptocurrency world. 30-year-old billionaire Sam Bankman Freed. You just need FTX. It's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. Super Bowl ad. The thing that's really crazy about it is I look at how did all these celebrities get pulled into this? I mean, how did this this guy, the guy that we're looking at right now, trust this man with all of their money and and to go on and do these endorsements for this company? I mean, how did this happen? Yep. Naming yep. stadiums, Crypto Steph Curry, stadium. Giselle Bunchen. Yeah, we did a lot of things to try to uh, to try and bolster our reputation, to try and you know help our brand. But in the early morning hours of November 11th, it all came to an end when FTX filed for bankruptcy and Bankman Fried stepped down as CEO amid reports of FTX customer funds being used to pay Alameda Research creditors. This confirmed by former Alameda CEO Carolyn Ellison during an early November video meeting with employees. Alameda, the crypto trading firm also founded by Bankman Freed. ABC News reached out to Carolyn Ellison for comment, but has not heard back. One yeah. of the reasons FTX went bankrupt is because FTX deposits Yep. We're used to pay Alameda's creditors. They sure were. Carolyn Ellison said you knew about that. Is that true? Sure did. You know, best I can tell, Who knows? Uh, Alameda did have a big position open on, on FTX. Um, that position, uh, I think, was I think. You know, very over collateralized uh, a year ago. There it was, was a, a total they market collapse. They know what and, they were doing. You know, specifically a large correlated collapse in its assets You know, over the last month and to some extent over the last year that I, uh, you know, threatened that position quite a bit. And I think that's, you know, as best I understand, a lot of what happened there. I, I am no cryptocurrency expert. I'm no finance expert. Yep. But I must say too, I'm not a crypto expert. I'm not a finance expert either. Um, I do want to say that I did have money in the Voyager platform. I've been very open about that uh, on my channel. I had $5,000 invested in some crypto over there. Eventually that platform pretty much the same way that FTX ended up going bankrupt, I went into a class auction lawsuit with Voyager. And guess who was the company that uh, won the auction to buy off the Voyager assets? FTX. So I was very happy about that. I thought that I would get at least 80% of my money back. That's what basically was promised in the class action lawsuit. And we signed paperwork to have FTX buy Voyager's assets. And then about a week later, FTX crashes, basically lose all its money. So my money is most likely never going to be returned to me. <laughs> but I don't think you answered my question. I always ask, yeah. you, did you know that yeah. FTX deposits were used to pay off Alameda creditors? Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know of FTX deposits being used to pay off Alameda creditors. Are you, uh, which, which creditors are you referring to? Carolyn Ellison said that you all knew that these funds were used, were put into Alameda. They were the funds owned by your depositors. So I can't speak for who knew what, you know, a lot of the customers on FTX did have, you know, borrowers either liar. dollars or, liar, liar, liar. Or, or euros. But as you know, the FTX terms of service, yep. tell the people who signed up, none of the digital assets in your account are the property of, or shall be, or may be loaned to FTX trading. But you're saying that happened. My understanding is a few things happen. The first is there is a margin trading facility he on FTX by which users can lend out funds, by which other users borrow funds. And so there are explicit cases where there is, you know, margin extend, where there is borrow lending. If yep. Alameda is borrowing the money that belongs yep. to FTX depositors, that's a bright red line, isn't yeah. it? There I'd are a lot it. of cases where that's actually explicitly part of the programs and that are but happening. Not, not here. Here it says that the digital assets may not be loaned to FTX trading. They can't be loaned out. <laughs> uh, there existed a borrow lending facility on FTX. And, and I think that's probably covered. I, I don't remember exactly where, but somewhere else in the terms of service. But they'd have to approve of that. They're saying they didn't approve of it here. They're so saying you approved of it. If you rewind to, you know, the beginning of FTX, um, where, you know, some customers were, you know, uh, I think in line with sort of existing relationships that, that they've had, at least in some cases, wiring money straight to Alameda Research in order to trade on FTX. So you do know and you did know that FTX deposits were being funneled to Alameda. So I was vaguely aware or that that was how some wires were being sent in the first place. Um, Didn't that set off alarm bells yeah, in your head? Right. So there are a lot of people who are involved in that process. And look, I really deeply uh, wish that I had taken uh, 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 like a lot more responsibility for understanding right. what the details were of what was going on there. I knew that legal was involved. I knew that other groups at the company were involved, that you know there were agreements drafted up. But you're ultimately responsible. And ultimately, absolutely. Like I Look, I should have been on top of this and I feel really, yeah. really bad and regretful well, sure that I do. wasn't. And a lot of people got hurt and that that's on me. Yeah. Here's what Mark Cuban has to say about that. Yep. He said, if I were him, I'd be afraid of going to jail for a long time. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, it's not my call what happens and uh, the world will judge me as it will. Are you worried about going to jail? There are a lot of things that are worrying me right now. Um, and, you know, as best as possible, I'm trying to focus on what I can do going forward to be helpful right. and, you know, let whatever, you know, regulatory and legal processes are happening play out as they will. I, I do want to move on, but just, just finally on yep. this, this is really a yes or no question. Yep. Carolyn Ellison says you knew that FTX yeah. funds were being... Yeah funnel to Alameda. Did you know that? I knew that there is an open margin position there and that that involved. I know, but that's not what I'm asking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if she's in that's court and you're narrative. in court and she's under oath and you're under yep. oath and you're asked, did you know that these funds were being funneled to Alameda? What is your answer? I did not know that there is any improper uh, use of customer funds. You also took out a $1 billion loan. What was that for? That was generally for reinvesting in the company. That was not for, you know, consumption. I Who in their right mind gives this guy a billion dollars? Here, Sam, just have a billion dollars to reinvest in some crypto company. Yeah. You know, to my knowledge, I have basically nothing left. Um, you know, basically everything I had was invested in the business. Still got I expect I'm going to have money. nothing at the end of this. I, I think I had $100,000 left in my bank account last sure. I checked. And I, I think I have, you know, uh, one credit card working with that right now. 
earlier this summer, you thought you had what, 32 billion? Probably 20, but uh, a whole lot more than I do now. I can't imagine what it feels like to go from $20 billion to $100,000. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's been a really, it's been a really humbling fall in, in a lot of ways. How do you explain the failure? Was it an inattention, arrogance? Um, it's a good question. Was it unethical? Some part of it was just literal distraction. I sh really should have spent some time each day taking a step back and saying, what are the most important things here, right? And like, how do I have oversight of those and make sure that I'm not losing track of those. And frankly, I did a pretty incomplete job at that. I spent a lot less time looking at assets and looking at balances and positions because that's not where revenue came from. And so it, I wasn't seeing as a core business driver, obviously it was a core risk. And that was a huge mistake of mine to not think more about that. that you said one of your great it's, talents in a podcast was managing risk. That's right. And well, it's obviously wrong. <laughs> well, I, it's, I think that there is something maybe even deeper wrong there, which was, I wasn't even trying, like I wasn't spending any time or effort trying to manage risk on FTX trying like, and that, that obviously that's that a stunning a admission. What? Yeah. That's a pretty stunning admission. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't know what to say. Like what happened happened. And like, if I had been, if I had been spending an hour a day thinking about risk management on FTX, I don't think that would have happened. I think I, I stopped working as hard for a bit. You know, honestly, if I look back on myself, I think I got a little cocky, maybe more than a little bit. Um, and I think part of me, like, you know, felt like. I think a lot of this is, this is just someone that was very good at manipulation, very good at someone that probably had a basic understanding of how crypto work, the markets work, positioning, uh, risk and basically tricked a lot of people out of money. And this thing basically was just rolling uh, like a train until someday he just said, look, at some point the wheels are going to fall off. So let's just continue to enjoy all of our life experiences on someone else's dime. And then if the wheels fall off, I'm just going to say, uh, oh, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. He's going to play this. I didn't know thing. Well, I, this guy's going to most likely end up in jail. As I said, that was a pretty stunning admission. The whole job of the head of a firm like that is managing risk. Risk, risk exactly. And he wanted to, he reached out. He Desperately. Wanted to... he, he went against the, the advice of his lawyers. Uh, he thanked me at the end. We, like I said, we talked for close to two hours, and you saw he didn't flinch no. from the tough questions, but it, even though he had a hard time at times answering them. And, you know, he just wants to speak his mind. Now, one of the reasons he said he wants to speak his mind is this. He still hopes that in some way he can contribute to the idea of getting some of the depositors' monies right. back. Now, I asked him, is that delusional? It's gone. Because uh, that's, yeah, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, and he has, like, money, and he has no like, role in FTX right now, but he is under gone. facing that several investigations gone. at this point, that but he back. wants to tell his side of the story. I wonder how the people who lost money will respond to this yeah. interview, because clearly he struggled to answer a lot of these key questions. We will see. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's it. That is the network first actually major network interview uh with sam bankman fried when he sits down with good morning america what do you guys think here leave your comments below do you think that sam knew what was going on do you think that sam uh was was playing this all dirty and just basically was riding the train until the wheels fell off and then was going to make these excuses like i didn't know what was going on i'd love to hear your comments below please drop a comment always make sure to upvote this video. And if you're the first time over here, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Please hit that bell notification. And every time I drop a new video, come over and give some interaction to it because the YouTube algorithm is saying that content like this is dead. And I need those upvotes. I need those comments. And please make sure to always share this content as well. It's going to be it today. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And always remember to keep it live and keep it loud. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.